In this video, I'm going to go over an example of hydroforming a tube using solution 402 multi-step nonlinear kinematic. And really, I did this just to provide an example of what can be done with this type of solution. If you're into cycling, you'll notice that a lot of aluminum frames on mountain or road bikes have intricate cross sections. And a lot of the manufacturers, I believe, are using hydroforming to accomplish this. So that's what I'm relating to my model here. So I've set up my model to be a solid block on the outside that's acting as the form. And on the inside, I have a cylindrical surface that I've messed with shell elements. So I'm going to go into my shell element property here and show you the starting thickness. And what's nice about using solution 402 is that I can request shell element thickness output and use that to compare against my original thickness. So because I want my inner tube to conform to the shape of the mold, I had to set up a contact here. So I'm going to show both regions. And the tube region is just on the, the shell elements here. And the die region is on the inside of the, the solid block. And basically I've set up a, a dummy shell elements with zero thickness and I'm going to use a, a rigid connection region. And what that's going to do is this reference node links to a, a node out in space that I've constrained in all degrees of freedom. And that way it, it cuts down on solve time by reducing the stiffness matrix. So I don't actually have to model the mold as solid elements. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off a couple of things here for viewing purposes. I'm going to turn off my connection regions, my connectors, and my nodes. And as I mentioned earlier, the cylindrical tube is meshed with shell elements. So I set this up as when I show the thickness of the element, you can see that it's just touching uh, the inside of the mold. And I set the contact up with just a slight amount of friction to provide some stability when this thing is moving around in the form. And along with that, I have two rigid elements, um, one at each end of the tube here, and they're connected in the middle with a uh, coincident node C bush. And I did this so I could have some stability um, in the, the Z direction, which is along the axis of the form here. Um, so the the C bush element just has a, a slight stiffness in the um, Z direction so it can move back and forth but again provide some stability and then in my rigid element uh, I, I I'm just transferring the, the Z uh, degree of freedom and that way uh, the tube can expand in the, the X and Y direction and, and rotate if needed So I'm just going to turn off the rigid elements here again, just for viewing purposes. And I'll show uh, how I set up the load here. So I'm going to turn on my loads. And uh, it's a pressure load, so it acts on every element um, of, of the tube. And I'm going to go in here and edit this. And uh, I have my load set to 20,000 PSI. And I also have it um, as a time dependent load. So this is just easier to uh, set up and that way you know what, uh, how much load is applied at what time. So I'll turn that back off. And now I'm gonna go into my function and show you uh, the function that it was attached to. Basically, um, it's, an, it's a, a ramp function from zero to one. So at, at time zero, I have zero load. And at, at time one, I have one times you know 20,000. And then on top of that, I just want an extra step uh, to 1.1, but I still have it as you know one times 20,000. And this is just so uh, it's, it's a little flat line um, at the end of the simulation. And again, you'll notice that I have this uh, this function type defined as a, a verse time function. I'm going to go over the material here. Again, the tube is aluminum. And I have some uh, nonlinear properties set up here. So the, the type is going to be plastic. And I also have it attached to a stress versus strain function. And again, I set this up so um, it has a stress strain function. That way in the analysis, you know, I'm running it, it's expanding out to the form and it's not going to deform back to its original shape.
So here's some data that I found on aluminum. And again, the, the type of the function is a stress first strain. So I'm going to give a brief overview of how I set up this analysis set. So again, it's a SOL 402 example. So you'll see the analysis program is SimCenter Nastran, and analysis type is you know, 28 multi-step nonlinear kinematic. So I'm going to go into the bulk data options, and you'll see that I have large strain turned on, which actually implies large displacement. So again, you know, the, the cylindrical tube is going to expand out to the form, and uh, theoretically I should have some large strains from that, because again, I don't want it to deform back to its original shape. So I'm going to go into the time steps here, and uh, I've already showed you the pressure function where it was a you know a linear ramp from zero to one, and then a little extra step to 1.1. So I have my um, time step set up here so that you know zero to one, I have 40 increments, and that's where the crux of the you know, solving is going to happen. And then I just have one extra. Um, time step at end time 1.1. I only need one increment in there because I'm not expecting much to happen between those two times. So I'm going to go in and show the boundary conditions I have set up for this analysis set. Uh, by default, all connectors are turned on. Again, this is a pretty simple model. It's only got one connector, so I can leave that as is. I already have my constraint set picked out in the constraints drop down. And you'll notice that my load is selected in the loads time option. So because I've chosen a time dependent load, I have to specify that in that specific spot. Um, if it were in the loads, it would automatically ramp that. So that would uh, be more for something that isn't time dependent. Uh, it's just to a specific value. And the last thing here is the output request. So you'll see that I turned on total strains. And what this is going to do is request that I get strains, plastic strains, and for Sol 402, I actually get a shell thickness uh, output request. And that's kind of nice because now, again, I can see uh, what I started with and the end um, thickness of my shell elements. And this is where I would go and, you know, kick off my uh, analysis, but in order to save time, I already have this uh, done and the results read in. And I'm going to go ahead and go into the post processing toolbox to turn on my contours. And I already have on plate top on Macy's plastic strain, but I'll just show where it is in the vector selection dialog. So typically I would go into the deform options and this is where I would pick my multi-set animate. But what's nice about 401 and 402 is uh, these analyses are, are grouped into analysis studies. So what I can do is right click and do animate study and that's a, a real slick way of kind of on the fly animating what happened in my simulation. So here you can see my surface there which is uh, basically the starting point. So I'm going to use the draw erase tool just to hide that, that surface. And now I can get a, a good view of what's going on with my model. And as you can see, it's expanding out and, and uh, pressing up against the form. I'm going to continue on and just show a couple different angles of the animation. I'm going to switch back to the undeformed model and uh, expand the analysis study. And as again, you can you see all the results within the study. And now I'm just going to show the deformed, uh, the max deformed at time 1.1. And I'm going to go through listing some results. New for FEMAP 2020.2 is the ability to list results directly to Excel. So I can find that by list output results to Excel. 
So I'm going to leave the default options in here. And in my output sets, I want to make sure that I have time 1.1, which is the max on. And then I'm going to use the, the filter to search for my thickness output. Again, the solution 402 gives me this output. And in my element selection, I'm just going to use the property method. Again, this is an easy way to um, select specific uh, elements. So I'm going to hit the drop down and just select my tube property. And pretty quickly, I get Excel to pop up with all my results listed. You'll notice on the left hand side, I have all my IDs, uh, the elements, and uh, their corresponding output values on the right. And I'm going to use the quick filter to just sort this data um, from smallest to largest. You know, maybe I want to see, okay, what's the, the smallest or the, the thinnest element that shrunk down to, you know, 016. And maybe I want to do an average calculation of all the thicknesses here. So I'm just going to use my Excel functions to go ahead and type this in. And now you can see I have my average uh, shell thickness after. So I started with like 019 and I'm down to about an average of 017. Thank you guys for watching the video. I hope this provides an example of what can be done in Solution 402 and just some tips and tricks in using FEMAP. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to comment them and I'll try and answer them.